Well, joining me now is the SNP's leader in Westminster, Stephen Flynn. Hi, nice to see you, Stephen. Good morning, Jim. Um, what did you think of, of the debate? One of my colleagues, John Craig, said that he, he felt that Hamza Youssef, who, who you are supporting, was guilty of a bit of mansplaining. Well, I've not seen the debate in its entirety, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I was voting last night uh, against the government's deplorable uh, asylum seeker bill. Um, but what I have seen on Twitter uh, when I got back uh, to the flat last night and what I've seen this morning, it's been very similar to the, the previous debates. I think there's been robust exchanges, to say the least. Uh, and I'll, uh, I'm looking forward to the end of the contest. That's probably the, the best way to put it, because I think it's time that the, the SNP moved on, that we focused on delivery and we focused on the big issues that are facing the people of Scotland, the cost of living crisis, um, the, the challenges which exist within our health service and health services across the UK and, of course, how we get to that independent future. Is Humza Yousaf the right person to do that, though? We, we put, carried out a lot of polls in advance of the, of the debate last night. Um, one about Humza Yousaf himself. Twice as many people think that he'd be a bad First Minister as a good one. Let's have a quick look at the, at the results of that poll. Um, <coughs> can we bring it up? Oh, there we are. Uh, who would be a bad leader of the country? 44% uh, Hamza Yousaf, 39% Ash Regan, 36% Kate Forbes. Mm. It seems that the public maybe don't agree with you. But no, I think Hamza will be a fantastic leader. And, and the reason for that is simple. You know, life is tough at the moment uh, and people are crying out for a little bit of hope. We've had Brexit, we've had the pandemic, we've had Liz Truss destroying the, the economy and, of course, we've got the cost of living crisis. And Humza's plans in respect of childcare in Scotland are transformative, expanding it to, to one and two-year-olds, which is a win-win for families and also for the economy. He wants to create that green industrial revolution that I'm very keen to see, being in the northeast of Scotland. I want to see that just transition that protects jobs uh, and the climate, but perhaps most important of all, I think he'll bring the Scottish National Party back together. He will, he will unite us uh, and lead us to hopefully bigger and better things. You've not mentioned independence yet, which I, has surprised me. I, I, I think I, I did. <laughs> to, to I just missed it. <laughs> in, in my opening answer. Um, because that, that, that's obviously the, the, the thing which, which defines the Scottish National Party. Um, it is the ultimate goal that we want to, to achieve. But we've also got to be cognizant of the challenges that are facing people on a day-to-day -day basis at the moment. You know, we've got the Chancellor's budget um, in tomorrow, actually. Uh, and we've not heard from him yet what his plans are in relation to, to energy bills. That's the big thing that people are contacting me about. They want to know how they're going to get by on a monthly basis. They're getting squeezed whichever way they turn, whether they go to the shops for their food costs, uh, whether it's their mortgage costs or their, or, their, um, or, or, or indeed um, their, their energy bills. They're getting challenged every way they turn. We need the UK government to take action. We've proposed that they don't just freeze bills, that they cut them by £500 a, a year because they have the fiscal headroom to do that. That's, that's the big issues of the day. We should be focusing on that. Uh, and I think it's incumbent of all, upon all of us to, to be talking about the, the things that matter to people in Scotland. But the latest polls, again, don't show that there is an overwhelming majority backing independence in no. Scotland. Um, one that we, we carried out, YouGov poll for Sky News, 46% backing an exit from the UK compared to 54% who want to stay. It d doesn't seem that, that it is the right time to be raising this again, is well, it? Well, well, the polls for the last couple of years have generally been there or thereabouts 50-50. Mm. They sway from us being 53... It's not 50-50, it's, well, well, it's 46-54. Yeah, There's a big yeah, difference, isn't yeah, there? Yeah, but they sway from us being on 54 to, to the no side being on 54, and that's happened um, consecutively uh, and on many occasions over the course of the, of the last couple of years. But that's where it's incumbent upon us to have a, a leader who addresses the big issues that are facing people at the moment, but also builds that that widespread support across society in Scotland for that better, fairer, greener, independent future that we, we want to see. And I think our views and values in Scotland are in stark contrast to those, those at Westminster. We have a Conservative Party which is going down a track which, frankly, I don't think any of us quite seen coming. The, the right-wing politics that are emanating from the Chancellor and the uh, the, um, the Prime Minister and, and the Home Secretary. And, of course, you have a, a Labour Party which is just as keen as the Tories are when it comes to the, the removal of the, the UK from the European Union, who don't seem to think the single market, uh, customs union and freedom movement is a good thing and want to deny the people of Scotland their democratic right to choose. No matter which way people of Scotland turn, you have a different shade of blue uh, at Westminster. That's not the future we want. We want a, a better, brighter future for everyone in Scotland. But, but some would say that, that, that Hamza Yousaf has, in a sense, uh, the same shade of blue for, for the SNP in Scotland. He's just the continuity candidate, Nicola Sturgeon 2.0. I, I don't necessarily buy into this continuity aspect. I think each and every politician is, is their own person. And ultimately, what we're going to have is change. Uh, I think change is a good thing. I think change affords us the opportunity to have a little bit of hope. 
back in our politics uh, as well. But when it comes to the SNP's record of delivery in government, it's something that we should be proud of. It's something that we, we should celebrate. We've delivered a lot for, for the people of Scotland over the course of our tenure in government. And even if you look at some of the portfolios that, that Hamza has held when it came to transport, the Queensferry Cross, and a huge infrastructure project which came in uh, under budget and, and on time when he was just as secretary, crime was at record lows. And of course, when he's health secretary, as he is now, uh, despite the challenges that we all face in our health services across the UK, um, the health service in Scotland is performing the best of all those, and we've not had a single nurses' strike on Hamza's watch. So I think he has a record there to be proud nurses of. Strike, and... But there's real problems with funding, isn't there? NHS Ayrshire and Aaron says it needs 13 million mm. to hit its reduced waiting time. It's getting 7.8. NHS Highland needs 12.5 million. It's getting 8.3. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you could go through all of them. They're, they're not getting the money they need. To put it another way, it would require savings of around 621 million for these trusts to break even. There is an issue with healthcare in Scotland, and that's down to the SNP. The, the, there is an issue when it comes to, to finance, but of course, the, the levers of power when it comes to finance in these aisles are determined, not in Hollywood, they're determined at Westminster. The Scottish Government operates with a fixed budget, which is given to them each and every year. Now, there is some tax varying powers within that, but not to the extent that would be able to fill the, the black hole that, that Westminster austerity has, has of course, created. But the, the point I was making there was that the Scottish Health Service is performing better, despite the challenges we face, and there are significant challenges, better than all other health services on these aisles. We've not but had not a on these metrics. It depends but, but, which metrics you look at. We've not, no, 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 those are the important ones, because that's people getting treated, which is the most important thing. Uh, and, and also that um, there's not been a single nurse's strike. I think those are things to be celebrated, and they've happened on, on Hamza's watch. Stephen Flynn, good to talk to you. Thanks a lot for coming in. Thank you.